morning. We're joined by Philip Tolk, head of Asian gaming research at the Royal Bank of Scotland. Uh, good to see you this morning. morning. Uh, first off, let's get some reaction to Las Vegas Sands. Uh, have you seen the after hours a surge up close to 5%, also doubling in Sands China? It seems up and up right now for Sheldon Allison. Yeah, and the Las Vegas Sands results are probably reflecting better results in Vegas and Marina Bay Sands more so than uh, the results in Macau, which we thought were a little less stellar versus mm -hmm. our expectations. A little less stellar, doubling of uh, second quarter profit, not so great to you? The, the net profit number was a good number. Yeah. Uh, the revenue number missed our estimate by a few percentage points, and the EBITDA or cash flow number also missed by a few percentage points. Okay, so, so what's your advice then on uh, Macau, China itself? Sands, well, China. we certainly like uh, Macau and we like Sands. I mean, the, these numbers weren't great against our estimates, but the non-gaming side of, of Sands was, was very good, mm -hmm. leading to that good uh, net income number. Parcel 5 and 6, the new project on Kotai, will come in next year. Yep. That will certainly help. And Sands is committed to addressing their VIP business, which has been weak, and, and that should certainly help. Yeah, the well. high rollers, uh, they have been uh, considered weak as compared to the other yeah. players in this space. Let me show you what happened uh, yesterday. Uh, the Macau blast, right? Uh, it looks like the markets reacted uh, kind of violently to this news that we had some sort of uh, blast taking place in Macau. I think a few casinos were impacted. Yeah, I'm led to believe that one smallish casino with an SJM license was impacted, um, but I don't believe the casino itself has been impacted. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, whilst there were fears of all sorts of things, it, it turns out it looks like it was a, a gas leak in a restaurant which caused this, and it shouldn't have any real impact on Macau. Yeah, lots of speculation swirling yesterday, but then I, I guess we got the underlying details of what actually happened, Phil. All right, so what's happening in Macau these days? You know, we had some estimates coming from CLSA, still very bullish on the Macau gaming scene. Yeah, and we're bullish as well. Yeah. I think you're likely to see a bit of a slowdown in the second half of the year, but I'm talking about from 45% in the first half to something in the mid-30s in the second half, leading to, you know, somewhere between 35 and 45% growth for the full year. So these are still very, you know, stellar growth numbers, and I don't see any interruption to that going into 2012. Okay, either. when you say these numbers, what are we talking about? Is that the revenue yeah, growth? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking top line, um, but because a lot of these companies have good operational gearing, you're seeing margin improvements across the board, and that obviously is leading to more cash flow for investors. Yeah, so. and some blow-up results for some of these uh, American casino names that also operate in Macau, not just LVS, but also Steve Wynn clapping all the way to the bank as well. Absolutely. Okay, so best bet right now in the gaming space. Well, it's probably Sands. Uh, really? I mentioned, yeah, I mentioned that its, uh, its results were slightly weaker versus our expectations, but because we're seeing strong non-gaming, because we're going to see the new project on Parcel 5 and 6 next year, the real commitment to the VIP site, this stock is probably the one to, to look at, and it mm -hmm. trades at one EVD, but that point discount of the sector now it used to trade at about a three-point premium, so there's a real valuation argument here. Okay, and what about all the exposure from these new uh, projects and the new properties that came online? We're talking about Galaxy and their latest uh, casino op opening, Melco as well? Galaxy's been, been good and positive for Kotai. It seems to be leading to more visitation on Kotai versus the peninsula, which should help all the projects over there, both uh, those of, of Las Vegas Sands as well as, as Melco Crowns, you mentioned. So mm -hmm. So we, 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 like, uh, we think the opportunity for those Kotai properties is good. Okay, <laughs> it's good. Um, what about Singapore? You know, I was fascinated when you said that uh, it looks like LVS generated a lot more from Singapore and uh, Las Vegas. Las Vegas coming back, uh, yeah. that's pretty surprising. Is that taking away from Macau at all? Um, I think with respect to Singapore, I mean, this, you know, we're only about a year into the life of, of Marina Bay Sands there. Um, they've just had a tremendous couple of quarters growing their rolling chip or their, their high volume, uh, their VIP business. Mm -hmm. I think it's up about 50% in the last two quarters. And there's looks to be tremendous capacity in that building, uh, such that we think the opportunity in Singapore really isn't reflected in those share prices yet. And Genting Singapore, I should say, is the one we we favor there. It's your direct play mm -hmm. on uh, on Singapore gaming. All right. Well, Phil, thanks for dropping by today. Nice to see you. Philip Tolk of uh, RBS.